Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Petrosi. Good evening, everybody. Couple of reminders. We are now live stream, uh, Mr. Granary. We are live. Uh, I always ask the staff and kindly ask members of the board to speak into the microphone. And uh, we have a lot to get through, so we're going to move uh, quite quickly. I want to ask a, a teacher, uh, Mike Esposito, to come to the mic. Mike, would you step up, please? Let me just give Mike a brief, a brief, um, a brief introduction. And hello there, Dr. Bilson. How are you? This is this is Mike Esposito, a longtime social studies teacher. I recall him doing a lot of U.S. history teaching. He coached you. Well, I was going to say, Rob, that's why you became a musician, if he was your coach. Um, <laughs> I just want to say something about Mike. Um, one, of the kindest, uh, one of the kindest people we have uh, to students. And his, his especially has a passion for our uh, severely involved students. And uh, I've always appreciated his kindness, not only to our involved students, but to all kids and has been an advocate for them. So he's either going to talk about Abraham Lincoln that's adorning his tie or something else. So the floor is yours for five minutes, Mr. Esposito, or less. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Is this mic out? See if there's a button there. Switch. Switch. We have an electrician here. In the, there you okay. go. Oh, Mr. Pareto installed the microphone, so. Thank you for that uh, introduction, uh, Mr. Lori. First of all, I want to thank uh, all the board members, uh, board member Petrosi, um, Mr. Lori, like I said, all the board members for uh, having Jaquiel Jackson funding his trip to Niagara Falls. I really appreciate that. Students got a lot out of it. I can't tell you how many people said we have to bring this young man back. Second, I see uh, uh, a couple of administrators here, Ms. Jones, Mr. Rotella. I'll tell you what, I think all of you know I think they probably had the toughest job in the whole state this year with the opening of the schools. And that's all I'll say, they, they did a better job than I could have did. And I'm sure they're glad the year's over and uh, wish them the best of luck, especially Ms. Jones, who was uh, not going to be principal next year. Um, so yeah, what I came to talk about today is a young man by, by the name of Jaquiel Jackson. He's a 2019 CNN hero, he's from Chicago. He spoke at LaSalle Middle and at Gaskill. And when he, when he was talking, when he was speaking to LaSalle prep kids, a couple of things kind of struck me a little bit. Some of the things he talked about were attributes such as integrity, empathy, decorum, honesty, industriousness. Many of these terms, unfortunately, I think some of you know, are kind of foreign to our kids. Sign of the times. Um, if I could talk about a movie I show my, my students called it's, uh, The Good Lie, I, I show my sociology students every year. And one of the scenes, um, well, let me just tell you what the movie's about really quick. It's about uh, four brothers who walk 785 miles after their parents are murdered, and they walk to refugee center in Kenya, and they're lucky enough to uh, come to the United States, emigrate to the United States in 2001. Anyway, in one of the scenes, Mamir, uh, one of the brothers, is uh, one of his friends is, is uh, helping him with the interview process, and he tells Mamir, Mamir, you have to smile when you're being interviewed. And Mamir says, wait a minute, that would be insincere. Where I'm from, we don't do that. He's like, wow, this is America now. You're in America. You have to BS sometimes to get what you want. And uh, in one of the questions I ask my students is the juxtaposition in the movie. And the juxtaposition is the cultures, the Sunnis culture and the American culture. And unfortunately, it's a sign of the times that our culture does not value integrity, does not value decorum does not value industriousness. I'm not saying all Americans, but I think most of you agree it's, it's um, unfortunate that sometimes we don't place a value on that. And it was very clear in the movie that the Lost Boys, Sudan, it was very clear that from a very young age, 
integrity and decorum and dustrous, all those attributes were instilled in these people, like I said, from the time they were born. Um, and another scene in the movie, the brothers are introduced to a police officer. They all shake their hand and said, thank you for protecting, protecting us. We really appreciate you. I'm not sure how often that would happen in today's society. Um, I, if I could tell you um, about a, a student from Puerto Rico I have named Joshua uh, Madero. Every day Joshua walks in, he says, Mr. Espino, good morning. I have another student, a wonderful student from Puerto Rico named uh, Widalis. Otero, 99 student, barely speaks English. Every time I see her in the hallway, she addresses me, every single time. Every foreign exchange student I've ever had addresses me in the hallway when they come into class. But our kids don't. For some reason, our kids don't. And so I, I, this is like January. I'm like, you know, I'm going to address my kids. I'm, like, I'm going to tell them, hey, you know, when you see a teacher in the hallway, you should, not, not, maybe not every single time, but I think it's the right thing to do to address them. You know what? Most of them did. After January, I see kids in the hallway, hey, Mr. E, how you doing? Right, we, have, we have nice kids, too. They just, they just don't know. They're not being disrespectful. They're not being rude by not addressing teachers. They just don't know that's the proper thing to do. Um, so I guess my point is, is character education needs to be taught in our district from a very young age. Um, you know, there are many important things. I'm not saying, hey, the historical circumstance of World War II, that's not important. Of course that's important. Of course teaching the periodic table is important. Of course all the math algorithms are important. But teaching and instilling integrity and all those attributes like decorum and industriousness, I think that's kind of important too because they're not learning at home. I don't think there's any question about that. Most students are not learning that at home. I'm sure every one of you has a story, right? I remember uh, at Topps, uh, uh, over on Pine Avenue, I, I, when I was about seven years old, I took a caramel, I stole a caramel. And, uh, you know, we get home, and I show my mom, she's like, where'd you get that? And I told her, she's like, oh, we're going back. And we had to go, I'm sure of all of you have that similar story. Um, and I don't know where to start, but like I said, character education, in my, my opinion, there has to be some kind of initiative to do that. Um, I'm gonna tell you really quick about a lesson that I have in my class. Um, it's a CNN hero lesson. What the students have to do is research a CNN hero, tell them what inspired the CNN hero, uh, tell the class about um, the lessons they learned from the CNN hero. And one of my students, uh, a kid from Yemen, who, who uh, just moved here about five years ago, he was so, uh, I guess you could say, um, so impressed by Jaquille Jackson, who handed out 60,000 blessing bags to homeless people in Chicago. This young man is going to hand out blessing bags in Yemen uh, over the summer when he goes and visits his uh, relatives. Um, so, like I said, I'm not sure where, exactly where to start. Um, last thing, Jaquille does teach a class on social entrepreneurship. Social entrepreneurship is a creation of a business which the, the ultimate goal is to solve social problems and to affect change. Um, I think that would be a great start to character education, and uh, you know I'd be, I'd be willing to be, uh, I would like to be involved on that initiative. Um, lastly, I'd like to say, you know, I really appreciate um, teaching at Niagara Falls High School. I got good kids for the most part, 99% are good kids, and I love teaching every day. And, uh, you know, at the end of June, really, uh, you know, everyone thinks all teachers are really happy to end of school. Yeah, of course I'm happy, but, you know, I'm going to miss my students. And I think I, think I speak for a lot, of, a lot of teachers that, um, that they really enjoy teaching. Thank you. Um, Mike, before you leave, I just wanted to, if I may, just address some of the points you made. Um, and first of all, I think, you're, I think you're right about decorum. I don't think there's an argument there. And I think the saying hello starts with each and every one. It's, it's not an expensive thing. It's not an impossible thing, but it's a continuous message that needs to be preached. So I don't disagree with you. And I know that if a student was going into one of these business owners' uh, employment to get a job, that's the first thing they'd look for. Secondly, I think what I'm hearing you say is that uh, our international students really offer a lot to our school district, and I happen to agree with that. Thirdly, uh, I think as a teacher, it's our job to do what you did. We have to be intentional beyond the, cur the curriculum. You have a curriculum, you have a, a regents exam, but you've got to carve out five minutes every day. And I would give a teacher permission to have those kind of conversations. And finally, 
something that Mr. Corella uh, and I have talked about with the committee is taking the character education program that we have in elementary school. And actually, it is in four of the eight elementary schools. Uh, it's at our sister schools, Abbott, Kelfus, and um, Niagara Street, along with Maple. But what we've been talking about is the need through our SEL, the character ed program, to go to the other four elementary schools, the two prep schools, and the high school, so that by the time kids are getting there, they know the language, they know the expectations, and you don't have to teach that. It should come to you embedded. So it's something that Rick is working on. I think where, it could, where you could be helpful is that when it gets to the high school level to become part of that team, there are a couple of different modules or programs he's going to study, but I want you to know that that is going to, Rick, correct me if I'm wrong, Rick's intention is to expand that to the elementaries, the prep, and then lead it to the high school uh, through, through the initiative that we started with our sister schools, is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. We're gonna be starting this summer seating a group of teachers to look at some different programs to make sure that we have those supports in buildings where we don't currently have them. There, it's very new even for the buildings that have them now, but we want to, we see their value, so we wanna make sure that other schools uh, in our district have them as well. So, when, it, when and it's going to get there soon, when it gets to the high school, you're going to be called upon to be a, a, a team champion. I just want you to know that. That's okay, what you got out you. of it. You didn't just get a free dinner. You're going to have to do something <laughs> for it, you know. I, I just want to say I spent the Sunday with uh, Mr. Esposito a couple weeks ago at Ralph Wilson Stadium with the Special Olympics, and uh, he was fantastic with the kids. He was absolutely fantastic. And... Uh, I know your heart is really there, so thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mike. Okay. Oh, no, that's okay. I appreciate that. Remind me never to be superintendent. I must have emailed Mr. Lori about 30 times to get Jaquiel here, and, I, and that was just from me. I have no idea how many emails Mr. Lori gets, but it was great that, you know, every single time. <laughs> Multiply that by a thousand. <laughs> That's all right. It worked out well. Yeah, it worked out well. he always got back to me right away, and I can't tell you how much I appreciated it. And um, the kids are still in contact with this young man, and this, could, this kid could be an NBA owner someday. And I think some relationships are going to be built, and I think it, I think it could be uh, a game changer for some of our kids. Great, and uh, Rick will be uh, putting postings out, I'm sure, very soon about this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Want to go through a couple of agenda reviews because we have a public hearing at 6:30, so I'm going to ask Ray to put some things on the screen, and we'll go forward. Okay. At 6.30 sharp, we must stop because we need to have a, a hearing on our ARP funds. And you can see that at this time, Mr. Petrosi will call the meeting to order. And pinch hitting for Judy Glasser tonight is the marvelous and wonderful Wendy Tedesco, who will need to be appointed clerk pro tem. Uh, this comes with a humongous raise, Wendy, so congratulations. At that time, after the player, prayer and the roll call and the pledge, uh, Mr. Petrosi will introduce me, and I'll introduce Becky, to go through our American Rescue Fund funds. You need to know how much we spent, what we're proposing to spend next year, and how much we have for the third and final year. And then we'll close that meeting. And then at 7 o'clock, Ray, you're doing well. I want to go through the 7 o'clock meeting, particularly calling Ms. Massaro up in a moment. We have three presentations at 7 o'clock. The first one is your friends. They, they really like this board. NISBA is coming back to give another award, and I'll ask 
Messrs. Ventry, Rotella, and Ms. Jones to come and accept that because it was a PS2 or workforce program that they created. Um, even though you supported it all, they got more kudos from NISBA, or either they must really like the high school because NISBA's back again. Then um, we're going to give our golden apple to Mr. Randy Palladino from the uh, Labor's Trade Union. He has single handedly led along with Mr. Rotella and Mr. Corella the signing of five direct entry agreements with the unions for our kids to become apprentices. And he and his union uh, did two things, and I'll talk about this more. They paid for all of the OSHA cards, they paid for all the lunches, they paid for just about everything for these kids, with the exception of us getting the kids there and busing. And the and I'll say it quite honestly, the other thing that happened is all the trade unions, which are not always together, are now sitting together at a table working for the betterment of our kids. And that's a huge accomplishment. Doesn't sound like much, but a huge accomplishment. And finally, I'm gonna ask Mr. Weiss to join us to give Kiara Cox a $2,000 scholarship. She's a future minority teacher. She's graduating from Niagara Falls High School. She wants to be a teacher. I believe Fredonia, but I'll check it out as uh, soon as she's going to. But the board has contributed $1,000 and the union has contributed $1,000 to give a minority student, this year it's Kiara Cox, $2,000 for her college. After that, you have any of your oral communications um, about agenda topics, um, followed by the minutes. We do ask you to approve one bid tonight. That's the transportation contract. And we talked about it a couple of meetings ago. There are personnel reports that Maria will need to go through in a moment. And then there are four short, five short-term contracts. And that's followed by all of the agenda items. And I won't go through them all, but there is one or two that I wanna point out. Uh, unless you have questions, I would like to refer your eyes to at least to start to uh, agenda item 6.23. This is our nicer insurance. This provides insurance to the district. It, imp it in imports excess workers' comp insurance. It's our athletic insurance and it's our uh, crime insurance. That, and I just, we have the rates and the increases for you at 623, which we didn't have at the last meeting. All total, it's about $40,000 increase or 4.59% insurance increase. Becky, would you like to answer any other questions about the insurance resolution? Of course, if anyone has a question. No, okay. I, offhand, I do not, Mr. Petrosi. I can get that for you tomorrow. I will. I will get that for you tomorrow. I didn't bring the workers' comp down with me individually, so. The umbrella through nicer? Yeah, is it through that? Yes. So they, have, they, they cover it up? Yes. So that's in the umbrella cost is in there also? It is. The nicer premium is full coverage, our general liability and some ancillary items that are under that larger umbrella. Then we have the travelers for crime insurance, uh, excess workers' comp, and pupil benefits for the athletics. We have also um, submitted a separate application yep. for additional cybersecurity coverage, which uh, we will bring back to you uh, when we receive the quote, and we'll discuss that at that time. So, yeah, you're welcome, Mr. Petrosi. We're gonna bring this back to you with an amendment for, cyber, for more cybersecurity insurance. I think it's a wise thing. We'll get you the numbers. I think we need to do it. The other thing that Becky is doing in following in the footsteps of Joe Chirizzo, but not tonight, 
would you explain to the board, because you can do it way better than I, about how we've moved from 12 million to 20 million to the cap of 25 million? Yeah, our excess umbrella, uh, we can increment, we can add additional coverage up to 25 million. We were at 12 million uh, in the past couple of renewals, Joe had increased it. We were at 20 million for the current fiscal year. And we have chosen to take us to the max for 22, 23 at 25 million at the cost of like $1,200 per million. So for six, if I'm reading that right, for $6,000 more, we could increase $5 million worth of insurance coverage. Correct, and that's included in this premium. Just one question for me, Tim. Nice, is, is nice you're writing that? Or is that yes, good? they are. Could you ask them when next time you talk to them, where do they, are they reinsuring that? I can make a note of that and ask. Me, in other words, is, do they have, I, I'm sure they have reinsurance, and if you could find out who it's with. I will. Maybe yeah, with I several companies, just trying to make sure they're A, A minus and B. Okay. I can get that information. Thank I, you. I think I even understand what you're saying. Yeah, you know, because yeah. 25 million, God forbid, there's a, you know, a, a, a catastrophic loss. Yeah. I want to make sure it's going to get paid. There is a, just a small change to one of the agenda items as I was reading the packet, and Mrs. Dunn pointed it out to me two weeks ago quietly, and I appreciated it. Item 616 in the contract, the top line says Niagara University. It's really, a, but the rest of the contract reads Niagara County Community College. The agreement is with Niagara County Community College. This is for our summer courses for kids for BTEC. It's a, it's a $52,000 contract for NCCC. It's for BTEC. The money comes from the BTEC grant, but there was an error in the top line of the contract. It said Niagara University. It should have said NCCC, and that's, that, that needs to be uh, corrected. Um, other than that, I have informed you that we have removed um, four resolutions, three for CPL, and they're going to go on the July 7th, and I think you know why. We need more time with the contracts to make sure our attorneys had a chance to vet those construction contracts. And secondly, we removed the clerk. The clerk will come back on, on January, uh, June, July 7th, too. So those four resolutions were taken off. Uh, otherwise, with the exception of Becky's resolution that she just wrote, there was no changes to any of them. And there's a good number of them that are dealing with summer work and summer programs that we are starting July 5th and July 11th through the 18th of August. Maria, would you mind coming forward because I believe you have distributed through the mail personnel that is updated because you uh, decided to work a few days this last couple of weeks and you have done a, a young woman's job, it's not a yeoman's job, of filling staffing. And before you do, let me give you two preludes to Maria's report on the certificated staff. If we needed to open school today, we would be short six positions, uh, two special ed teachers, a school psychologist, a, um, two second language teachers, and a social worker. Uh, we can, and a science teacher. Pardon me? And a, science teacher. And, a, and a science teacher. We can get those people. We'll get them. So uh, out of a unit of 660, she needs to vet seven more teachers, um, which I think is really well. And if we have them before July 7th, she'll add a personnel report then. Um, it's really good news. It's really good news, and I really appreciate it. She still has, and I'm not telling you anything you don't know, she still has a little bit of work to do on the classified side with the associates. And finally, before Maria takes over, I believe there are two contracts that we're asking you to approve this evening. One of the contracts is with the tall unit and one is with the CSEA unit. The tall unit has ratified it with 
not out a single uh, vote against. And the CSEA did it with only one negative vote, uh, which is good. You may see representatives from those two unions addressing you tonight, and uh, uh, they may they may want to thank you uh, for what happened. But that's in the personnel report, right, Mary? Correct. It's an addendum to the classified personnel report. Thanks. Would you go through the board anything that you need them to know? I think you covered most of it, Mr. Lurie. I, what I um, wanted to know is if the board had any questions. We added a lot to the personnel report uh, since our last meeting. Um, we worked as hard as we could, and we got as many names before you as we were able to do. So I would love to be able to answer any questions if you have them. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Joe Microphone. <laughs> how many, um, how many um, positions, teaching positions, will we looking at filling uh, just to this date right now? I mean, you still have a little bit more to do, uh, but how many actual teaching positions, roughly? You don't have. I won't hold you to it or anything. That we'll be uh, bringing on. Like as of Are now. you talking about brand new or that we filled? We 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 filled about sixty positions. Okay. Those positions are new positions and regular substitute positions. And right. when, you, when you look at them as a whole, it's actually a little bit more than that. Okay. But the way that I look at it is if we are bringing on new folks and if we have to bring, on, uh, bring folks back again. So right. we're looking at at least 60. Our report is a little bit bigger than that because it also includes the voluntary and involuntary transfers. It includes the people that went to teachers on special assignment that we had to backfill, and it includes some retirements too. So it, it actually is a little bit more than that, but if you look at it as a whole, probably about 60. Yeah, that's what I was looking for, thank you. I met with um, the Men's Standing Strong group this afternoon, and I invited Maria to come in for the first part of the meeting because, I, because of that 60, I would say that I wanted them to be aware that close to 10, I don't, Maria could probably name them in her sleep, 10 are uh, black or brown individuals. And of course, that's been the source of conversation. But I wanted them to know that she, Maria, did her best in terms of outreach to recognize the fact that we need to have student faces teaching who look like our kids. And of course, we're nowhere near an equal ratio but that's 10 more teachers we brought on of that 60 that are black and brown. So I did share that with the group this, this morning, this afternoon. They were pleased. Maria came in and actually gave them names. I don't think we really violated too much. You're going to vote on them tonight. And they all were, they were uh, impressed with the, young, the youngness of them and how we're bringing a lot of young people back in. So I thought it was a good, uh, you, you, you stayed for the first half of the meeting. I thought it was they were receptive. I thought so too. Yeah, I just have one question. I, I last saw a lot of regular subs on there. Is are there going to be building based subs, or do we we cannot find enough? Uh, these people have contracts. Okay. So they're the the a lot. Because I know we we're short on subs and everything. Yeah. I was just wondering if they had enough um, for building based. We base. will we will hopefully have building based subs, but we won't know that until closer to September. Um, these folks are the ones who are actually covering vacancies that exist in classrooms and for positions. The building-based subs are the ones that cover the per diem absences. Yes. So um, they're really technically, if you want to talk about priority, they're the last hires, yeah. right? It's a little early, but the good news with everybody else slotted in right now, unless we open another class or we pull somebody, that, and we fill our TAs, haven't we, Maria? Yeah, we only have one vacancy in TAs. You know how we then, if we don't have a teaching job and you're a certified teacher, I say to them, Maria says to them, look, if we don't have a teaching job, come in as a teaching assistant right now. Spend the time. You're the next group we look at. We have one vacancy that we can, we can fill it. We're just kind of holding it. I actually have a name for you. She has a, anybody <laughs> who comes now, and we will get people, uh, we can start to build that cadre. Now, what happens over the summer, though, is somebody moves to California, somebody gives Maria a surprise retirement, Rick wants another reading recovery teacher, I'm making this up, Rick asks for another reading recovery teacher, uh, 
we find the money to do it and we'll let you know. So from time to time, uh, while I say it's that complete, there will be openings this summer. We, you'll, you'll, you know invariably you'll find an opening. And we also know already we, we have some uh, teachers who won't be starting the year because point. they're going to be on maternity leave. So That, Mr. Villardo, to your question, that eats into that subpool too. I, I don't even know who's pregnant and I don't need to, but then Maria has to take the next group and plug them into long-term vacancies. Maria, quick question for you. Mm -hmm. I believe we touched on this a few meetings ago, but when I'm looking at the probationary periods for not teaching assistants, but teachers, I see some very high levels of step there. Can you just walk me through again for those that are on this list that have a high step level that are still being put into this probo yeah, these probationary? Yeah. First name. Well, I don't, I don't, I mean, I'm not talking specific names, but there's a few, yeah. there's a few that have. So a couple things, Mr. Bilson, because there's two reasons that they might have this probationary period listed there. <clears throat> and in some cases it will be shortened and in some cases it won't be. So if we want to use just this person as an example that's at the top I don't, of the page. But, I just, and, I, I but it's, a, it's a good yeah. example. <clears throat> she came to us from another district. Um, she's entitled to receive the um, up to step 10 and start with us at step 11. Technically, her probationary period can be shortened if she can provide to me two years of evaluations under APPR. We have the ability to shorten it by one year. Thank you. If she's able to do that two years of effective or highly effective evaluations under APPR, we could shorten this period by up to one year and in some cases up to two years, but basically one year. So that's why somebody like that might have a high step level, but still be showing a four-year probationary period. We still need the proof from them that we're able to shorten the probationary period, and when she provides it, we do. I, I appreciate that, and I appreciate Nick's example. For, I'm looking at it a different way. So <laughs> for, the, for potential teachers that have come up through our system and continue to go up steps, but are not held to residency requirements and kind of are, this is kind of like, uh, it's a gray area, right? Maybe. Um, I know what you're I'm, talking about. I'm just, about. yeah, I'm just curious. I think maybe like in the future, I'd like to talk more about understanding that process and are, are there points where people can, you know, you can max out your, your opportunity to continue to be on, the, on a probationary basis. If, and I don't know if this is the case. Say somebody started at step one and then all of a sudden, they get to step 11, and they're still not in the district, not living here, teaching when everybody else is a permanent teacher. Like, is there a point where we have conversations about, hey, we've got these opportunities, we'd like to, you might be comfortable being a, uh, an ex-teacher, but we would like you to move into a permanent position because you're qualified to be in this role, and we're gonna make you permanent. And then, I don't know, I'm just kinda, I know what he's asking. You're having a conversation about it. I think those are, that's another good question, but <clears throat> to answer the second half of your question, if you see a teacher here who may have come up through our ranks and who may be on a higher step and is now going into a probationary period and has a four-year probationary period, the reason for that is because in our district, we don't evaluate our regular substitutes under APPR. And so without those APPR evaluations, um, we cannot give them years toward tenure. Excuse me, yeah, years toward their probationary period. So <clears throat> those folks who have come up through our ranks and are there, that would happen with. Where we have the issue that you're talking about, I think Mr. Laurie is actually going to be addressing this very shortly. Right. Um, there does come a point in time when we have the conversation with a person who has been a regular sub for many years when there is an opening. But one thing that I would like to say is what you're seeing on this report are the people who so play it out with me, even if they've only been here a couple of years and you have a regular sub who's been here for 10 years, <clears throat> they've been recommended for a probationary position before that other teacher. And there's a reason for that, mm -hmm. too. And so, it yeah. doesn't just have to do with residency. May I have one more thing? Just for yeah, but I want to, can I just follow Please. up with two yes. things? Two things on that point. It is not necessarily a one-to-one -one relationship for regular sub-teachers 
and the number of years you've been regular subbing that you'll get the probationary point. Not necessarily. There could be somebody at Niagara Falls High School that has been a regular sub for two years in math over somebody who's been here for seven years, but the principal sitting there is saying, I gotta have this guy or this girl. I gotta have them. They're just outstanding. They're on 50,000 committees. They're a teacher leader. The seven-year person's doing okay. We want them. But this person is shining. That's one thing. I don't necessarily look at years of service when giving out the beats. I look at the highest quality of teachers. That's number one. Number two, if I think I'm listening correctly, you are correct. There, and I'm having this meeting with a very, um, how shall I say it? A very, um, it will be a very, um, could be a very tense meeting Monday. Uh, this person has been a regular sub. Um, she's going to be offered a probationary job soon. She doesn't live in the city. Once we offer her that probationary job, she's going to have to make a decision within a year. Within a year, right? Really six months. You'll give her six months, and if he or she has a good faith effort, I'll come back to you and say, look, I want to give somebody else six more months. Th that happens. That's happening. And uh, it actually happened uh, in a non-teaching but a psychologist role when we did that. We can't keep you as a regular sub. Yeah. We've got to, I mean, are there, are there, I can think of three cases that you're talking about. I can think of a teaching assistant and two teachers where we're doing that. Sooner or later, sooner or later, we're going to make the call and say, you got to make a choice here. But, yeah, there's probably three to five people. I can think of three off the top of my head. I, I can, too. The only other thing that I want to say about that is that we do have to keep regular substitutes in for teachers on special assignment. Right. So there is um, nothing that prohibits us from allowing uh, people that we want to keep in the district to continue to be regular substitutes when we have <laughs> teachers on special assignment right. to put in behind them. I think, um, just one last, one last comment on it. I think where, where my uh, questions are, are, are coming from are if, they're, if these teachers are really, really good and they've come up through our system, mm -hmm. you know, I think those are the people, the A players, people that we want to we wanna be here permanently, right? We, right. Want, we want them to be permanent teachers. We don't want them to be probation, because they could just leave they whenever could. they want to. So I think how can we secure really great teachers if, if they've been here for a long time? That's, that's number one. Number two is, you know, by doing that, we're making these teachers permanent, and it might be easier if we ever run into conversations where, where parties might think that we might have opportunities to secure new, fresh, you know, um, high-qualified teachers. It might be easier to possibly, if I want to understand the process, right, bring, them, bring those people in, those teachers in as probationary, right? And then we're, we create a bench and we kind of have this, this process going. So just a couple thoughts that were running through my head about it, that's all. I appreciate the, the yeah, very, information. I, I, think those, I think they're all good thoughts. I think that yeah. um, that is exactly what we are doing. But I understand, I understand what, what you're saying. That is exactly what we're doing. That's what Mr. Lawyer was saying. We bring people in, and it doesn't matter if they've been a regular sub for 15 years or they're just coming new in the district. If they're good and the principals are recommending them, uh, and Mr. Lurie looks at their evaluations and is comfortable enough, we recommend them to be probationary teachers, and then, then we have gotten the best of the best. And you're seeing that with the recommendations for probationary teachers here, because uh, I know that I spoke to all the administrators about these individuals, and I shared what the administrators told me uh, with Mr. Lurie. So. Yeah. I get your point. I think, I think we're getting closer to a, a, an understanding across the board of what, mm -hmm. what we're doing. I think it's a conversation we may follow up this summer on, Mr. Petrosi, if I'm reading it, it, what you're thinking in your mind, too. The bottom line is uh, we could be close to be ready to start Monday if we, if we had to, sans those five or six positions. But to your point, Mr. Villardo, would we have a deep bench of building-based subs? The answer is no. Uh, we'd have a few, but the answer, honestly, is no. You, you have a few in the hopper, Maria, but not, not, not deep. 
Sure, and what, what's gonna happen is, and, and I hope they decide to just you know, be willing to stay with us to be BBSs, but um, as we fill our positions, other districts are seeking to do the same thing. Right. So you know, chances are a lot of those folks will get snapped up. Um, but we are getting really close, like you mentioned, to being complete, and hopefully we'll still have our few building-based subs that are willing to stay with us. Uh, on the other hand, just the thing, because I, I was just thinking, we couldn't hire enough building-based subs anyway with the amount of, some of the amount of absentees that are going on anyway. It'd just be a, a stopgap measure for a while. It would be, but it would be also be very nice to go yeah, back no, to the I, days I, yeah. when we No, I'm saying, but I mean, you could, the last report we got, we couldn't keep up with what was going on. The absences. Yes. Right. But I, I do support building-based subs, oh, is I what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. I, 100 percent i know and, 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 and the final comment on that is that's your interview if you want a job here and right now you'll get a job quickly if you come in as a building base or school base sub and we don't know you and you knock your socks off more likely than not a principal will call maria and say this tony Pareto is great the first time we have an opening for him let's hire him they do it they do it all the time we got to get tony we got to get tony but we have to we have to keep working at him. If it was Tony Pareto, I, I'm just saying that for the public. Here, here it comes. <laughs> here it comes. Did you? Uh, what, what, go ahead. Can I ask? A couple? Oh, of course. You don't mind. Maria, a couple quick questions. Mm -hmm. When we had building-based subs, how many do we have? <clears throat> Round number. I would say we had about maybe about 50 in a, in a good year, and then it kept going back down from there okay. because we used to try to put. Six at Niagara Falls High School, it's, it's, and then maybe about four at each prep, yeah. and then try to get two or three in each elementary. And school. that was probably, the, the peak was maybe five years ago? We peaked about five years, it was about, it, it started to go down in about, actually in about 2014, 15 well, is when we started six to or see. Seven years ago. Yeah. How many teachers have we added, guess, in the past six years? I really, it's a terrible guess. I mean, last year alone, we added about 15 new teachers. And we, we, so we had that real lean period around 2011, 2012, and you all lived through your terrible budget years where we cut back on some of our right, programming. Right, but going back to 14, when the yeah. subs were at their peak, right. would it be fair to say 30 teachers we've added in the past seven years? <sighs> Yeah, nope. I, I mean, again, I'm, I'm just stabbing in the dark because what, no, what I, I'm no, going on question. is what we're doing with reading recovery and the academic intervention services because that's where the new, we added all the new social workers, 12. we've added new teaching assistants, we've added additional speech teachers and psychologists, and so then what, ha and special education teachers because we brought classrooms back. But where we've, we've added the most is in programming. So what we've done in programming is bring teachers out, put them in reading recovery, put them as instructional coaches again because we lost so many, and then created the AIS programs, and that's where we've added the staff behind them. Well, the point I'm trying to make is staffing-wise, we had building-based subs, but now we have regular positions, and many of those subs may be in. Correct. Our staffing level is Correct. probably pretty close. I'll follow, I will follow you with that logic. I'm not saying that if we didn't have those positions, those people would still be here as subs, but I understand your logic, and so. But my point is, if you had 600 teachers, including the subs, we still have 600 teachers. Very right. close to it. Right. Just, if just we trying did. to make a point. If we did, yes. Yeah, I'm just trying to make a point. Yeah, you know where I'm going. No, I, I understand Well, your point the too. other thing, Mr. Petrosi, is and maybe we can bring this to you at a retreat or some other time soon, is if we show you the class sizes in elementary, the class sizes in elementary, and I believe that our kids need these class sizes, you would see them between 16 and 20. Now, in every school, there's gonna be a class size of 25, but in five of the six grades, five of the six grades, you'll see class sizes of 16 to 20. And why? Our kids need more in, in, intensive instruction. And I forgot to add that we did add all those pre-K-3 classes because we've decided to add pre-K-3 as well. 
That's 12 right there. That's 12 I, I, right there. Where, where I was going, I just want to give staff and everybody credit. We've added the people. The jobs we're having trouble with, everybody's having trouble with. And I, I did look in the paper and I did go online. Everyone's looking for a psychologist. Everyone's looking for a second language teacher. We're all looking for the same people. Yeah. There just aren't enough. And if it'll be like, you know, eventually there'll be enough yeah. and we'll move on. And subs, nobody has subs. I know. It's, it's, un, it's unfortunate, but I think that what, we're, what we are also seeing, and Mr. Lurie um, does this every day, and, and I try to work with the schools, is we're also seeing renewed interest. It's not going to be enough to bring us back to the levels where we were, but we are seeing renewed interest in going into education yep. in, in our community, at least. So. There's also a correlation to someone's question about when did the drop-off happen. The state created an, an exam for teachers called EdTPA. And when this EdTPA, and I know my son was one of the, he's a teacher obviously now at LaSalle, as you know, but he was the last class that had to take the EdTPA to get his teacher certification. That EdTPA was very difficult and they've done away with it because of the teacher shortage. Now, when you speak to people like Dr. Chandra Foote and Dr. Deborah Colley, they're concerned because it's lower, their thought, it may have lowered the standards of teachers coming in. But when you look at what the state's doing, they're saying, we know that pushed people out of the profession and now it's gone. But that happened, in, that was brought in in 2015 because I know my son took it. And uh, he passed, by the way, but uh, it was an, arduous, grueling test. So, and I'm not saying lower the standards, I'm just saying that coincided with the, stu with the decline of teachers. That's also what's happening in special ed. Well, right that's- now, You've got it right now, and you're <laughs> gonna see them all drop out for that. How about the special ed story, where Maria spent days because now the secondary special ed teachers had to get content certified. And now that's going back to being a K to 12 or two to 12 specialist. It's all, uh, education all comes full circle. Anything on the classified? Uh, the only thing on the classified, again, and we do have a considerable amount of work to do there over the summer, um, is the addendum. I wanted to ensure that, um, I know Mr. Laurie gave us a preface for it, but I wanted to ensure that nobody had any questions about the two items on the classified report addendum. I know that we've spoken about this uh, at length, but now you're seeing it in front of you in writing. The addendum to the classified report, which has the two memoranda of agreement extending the tall contract and the CSEA contract. Okay, so we'll vote on, the, we'll vote on the addendum first, and then we'll vote on the report. Is that how you do it? Yeah, I mean, it, under Robert's rules, the, the president can choose to do it however he'd like. This is just well, that's been our procedure, yeah. so I, I think I'll just, because mm -hmm. the addendum's got to be approved before we could vote on it. It yeah. could, could go the other uh, way. I see, I see why you're doing it that way. Yeah, that makes sense, Russ. Yeah. But you, and again, you may get some union folks coming here. Uh, we, didn't make it, we didn't make everybody happy, but we have been very fair to those two unions. And they may come to you to express, I hope, their pleasure one of the ratifications was 142 to one, and the, uh, and the other one was 42 to nothing. So uh, I think the workers recognize that they're being treated fairly by the nine members of this board. And uh, I wanted to, and really that was all of Maria and Becky's work, uh, getting that put together, so thank you. Anything else? Yeah, thank you. We, we really don't have, too much time to go through that one agenda, uh, but it is a couple minutes before um, 6.30. Uh, we, we need to have a public hearing in three minutes on the American Rescue Funds that I'm gonna ask Becky, Rick, Ju uh, Julie, and possibly Earl and Ray to chime in because they all have involvement in that, uh, in that uh, public hearing, so. The other thing I'd like to mention, and I know there are people watching this, outside if what you hear in the next 15 minutes you find online and have a question the direction in this public hearing is to send me an email 
and my this will be posted on our website so that you can email me questions and my job is to bring back questions to our committee and to you that I've received from the public so they're not going to be here obviously but by July 1st I have to have all the questions addressed on these American rescue funds and you're going to see um, you're going to see that we have spaced this out where we spent six million dollars this year we're proposing about 11 million next year and 13 million the following year and Becky will show you but we have to do it to the tune of 20% for learning loss and I think we're going to meet all the categories but I believe this will be a highly scrutinized highly audited procedure that's why we have the public hearing Judy did a nice job taking ads out in the paper this is being live streamed and the public has until June 1st, July 1st to comment and make any adjustments of some, or question the staff or the board if they heard something that they don't agree with or think is outside the boundaries. The last thing I'll say, and then I think we'll be ready to start, is that the American Rescue Funds are not for everything. There are certain categories we could spend the money in and certain categories we can't. But it's uh, well thought out and well planned how we're going to do this. So with that, Mr. Petrosi, I think if you are ready to go, I think we're safe. It's 628. Any questions? Okay, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, And a prayer by Mrs. Dunn, please. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here today. We ask that you watch over us and keep us and keep us straight in your way, the right way to make decisions that are best for our district. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> thank you. Clara? Do you have to appoint uh, yes. Ms. Yeah, thank you. Can I ask that my, right bad. Now. my bad. May I have a motion to appoint Wendy as clerk pro tem for the evening? Mr. Bilson, second Mr. Consemi. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Wendy, you got a new job. Congratulations, Wendy. She, Nick, she does the district para committee and now this. Isn't she something? We could have called Patty Felton back. <laughs> it was a joke. And only I can say that, Patty. If you're watching or your mom's watching. Hi, Mrs. Felton. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is, this is the public hearing for the American Rescue Plans. I will refer to Mr. Laurie and staff, and sure. I'll let you give your presentation. Questions? You want them at the end or as we go? Uh, it, it, it would be, f you can ask them, board okay. members, as, as you'd like. I think we have enough, we have 30 minutes. I think you can ask them. These are the American Rescue Funds. These sit in a grant. These are not in your general fund budget. This money sits in what we know as an F code. F code means grants. This is where we had to put this money and it sits there. Um, if you go to the first slide, Array, I re in the regulations it has to talk about safe return to in-person instruction. I rewrote this with the assumption that we're not going to do any distancing test to stay, mandated testing, that that has all been gone by the wayside. However, I will be the uh, monitor of uh, health and safety, working with uh, Dr. Joe, the Board of Education, and everyone. So last year, this slide had all the things we we're gonna do. This year, we're saying we're just gonna stay on top of things. Okay, Rick? No, it wasn't Wendy's we fault. You. We need to call the roll with our new clerk. Can You're up, Wendy. Me? Is my microphone on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mr. Bass is on remote. Is he here? Okay. Earl, you there? Mr. Bilson? Here. Mr. Kinsemi? Here. 
Uh, Mr. Capizzi is excused. Mrs. Dunn? Here. Mr. Cadella is remote? No? Okay. Mr. Pareto? Uh, yes. Mr. Villardo? Here. And Mr. Petrozzi? Here. That was the best roll call we've ever had. <laughs> it was the best. There's EB. EB is real best. Great job, Wendy. You're done. Have a good night. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Earl, can you go? Can you go back to the slides for? Only the people I love. So go ahead, Ray. There's that. Uh, there's my name. We have to post this by July 1st. That's all that says. Okay. Mm -hmm. Becky, you're up. Okay, and uh, the plan requires that we have this public hearing, and as we did when we first received the funds a year ago, uh, obviously at that time we made our best estimate as to what we were going to do with the funds. And now that we're a year into it and everything's been implemented that we intended to do in the first year, we've got a better picture of where we need to use the remainder of the funds and how we're going to do that. We are again obligated to put that out publicly, get public comment, and you know, ask for everyone's support in our use of these funds. And we are doing that tonight. And the original plan, like I said, we haven't strayed from it, but we have enhanced it. So this is what tonight's meeting is to accomplish, is to um, just communicate what the changes have been, exactly how the funds are being spent, and we can give you a nice overview of what we will accomplish with them. Next one. Uh, originally, the funds were given to us were a total of $30 million, 138 thousand eight hundred seventeen and what we have to do is spend 20 percent to address learning loss due to the pandemic that 20 percent would amount to just over six million dollars as you'll see as we go through this we are meeting that minimum and we're far exceeding it because that's where we believe we need the most work in the district and we also have other thresholds that we have to meet. Uh, certain percentages of those funds have to be spent in each of the three fiscal years. Again, we're meeting or actually exceeding those minimums in every one of those categories. And the biggest part of this plan has to do with instructional programming, and Rick is going to take you through that. Good evening. You may recall from last year that the guidance that we were given uh, to be sure that we were spending the funds appropriately uh, included these categories here. First off, in, when we think about learning loss, we are really thinking about interventions. Any program or service that will help students catch up and learn what they may not have learned as well as they could have had we not had the pandemic. And within that group, which really includes all students, we must make sure that we're making a special effort to uh, address the needs of our students with disabilities, our English language learners, and our low-income students. So taken together, that really is most of the students that we have within the district, within those three categories. This next slide uh, talks about the categories that we um, will take a look at, again, to decide uh, whether or not we're spending the funds appropriately. So when you think about learning loss, it will break down, or addressing it, it will break down into, the, to, into these four categories. The first is programs to address the needs of high-risk students, which were on the previous slide. Uh, programs to address academic learning loss for all students and also programs that can extend learning opportunities, both remedial and enrichment beyond the regular school day. So that includes after school programming, weekend programming, and or summer programming. And then also strategies or programs that meet students' social and emotional needs. 
We know that the, that the pandemic and the isolation that resulted from it and the interrupted schooling resulted in a lot of issues for many of our students. So besides or in addition to the academic needs, we have to make sure that we are re-engaging our students in school, making them feel comfortable and addressing their emotional needs as well. So what are we going to be spending our funds on in regard to instructional programming? As Becky said earlier, this is going to look very familiar to you. So I'm going to review it quickly, and then I'm going to highlight where we have added to or, ex or expanded the programming that we set in motion last year. Because essentially, we're carrying it over three years, and, and what you're going to see has not changed. Um, the first category here has, has been mentioned several times tonight is reading recovery, which is an intense tier three service for students that are struggling to learn to read in the early primary grades, specifically first grade. That program will carry forth into, the, into next year, so those expenses are there. Also uh, in literacy, we have expanded our efforts to work with all of our teachers on differentiated instruction. And there's two prongs to that, training and additional new cutting edge materials to be used in our classrooms. So we started along that path last year, providing training and some new materials to our teachers. And we've greatly expanded it for the coming year, starting this summer. Uh, we'll be working with many of our elementary teachers. Uh, this uh, position here, the STEM coach at the uh, sister schools at the um, elementary level, at specifically the primary schools, will carry over into the next school year. The next slide deals with elementary mathematics and addressing learning gaps there through the uh, math uh, AIS program. You've had a report, you've had several reports, and then uh, we had a, a larger um, information sharing session with you several meetings ago where you heard from many of our staff about how that program is going. In essence, it will continue forward and it will be expanded. So what you're seeing here is how we began last year. And if you look at the bottom portion of that uh, of the left-hand side of the slide, you'll see that this year, we are, for 22-23, we're adding four additional teachers and three <coughs> additional teaching assistants so that we will expand the programs to all of our elementary schools. This year, we began it in five to see how it would go and to fine tune it. Next year, we will expand it to all of the schools. The expenses on the right are simply the curriculum materials and the training for new AIS teachers that will need to be done to prepare for the expansion. The next slide, it starts with uh, the extra uh, curriculum and uh, pedagogy coaching support that you approved last year for each of our prep schools. There's one academic coach in each school that will move forward into next year. And then this next category has been greatly expanded. Uh, summer academic enrichment and credit recovery. Last year, we began with uh, the credit recovery program for students at Niagara Falls High School, in particular those who were in danger of not graduating uh, for, uh, because they had not accrued enough credits. This year, we're going to use our ARP funds for our full spectrum of summer programs. So that includes academic remediation, enrichment, and uh, recreation and social emotional programming for students, all the way from students leaving pre-kindergarten four or pre-K four all the way up to 11th grade. At the upper level, I don't have the final registration in yet. We have a, about 250 students that will be uh, in the um, program for uh, prep school credit recovery, which is grades six, seven, and eight. 
We have another approximately 250 who are enrolled for the recreation program, the summer sports and enrichment program. I don't yet have the numbers of students. It's a little too early to see how many kids will be taking high school credit recovery courses. That's, that'll be grades nine through actually 12 because some students could graduate in, yep. in August based on that. Do you know, I don't have those do you know Brian yet. or? Four hundred. Yeah. Right, and that means just you know one or more courses. Right. But this is yes. yes. Elementary seven hundred. Elementary, we have um, over seven hundred students registered. We we actually have a waiting list. We know what typically happens is that many right. families will change their plans, and students will not enroll in the elementary program. So we will quickly fill the open spots from the waiting list. So that would be about 1,400 approximately students K to 12, approximately. 700, 250, 450, give or take. That's about where we're and at. And you know what, Mr. Lurie, I, I also don't have the numbers yet for the students in our uh, students with special needs programs. Right, well, pl that's right. Plus we have all those special um, all-star camps. You right, know. Camp uh, Wolverine. <clears throat> and extended school year. Yeah. So those are, those are two uh, enrollment sets that I don't have yet. Add another 100 there. 1,500, pardon me? Uh, well, I don't have that figure. It's, um, it's a large amount. The, the nice thing is that this funding stream has allowed us to uh, yeah. hire extra teachers and extra support. And not only teachers, but uh, associates to work with our younger students. Um, I, I think probably as a, as a um, condition or a, a consequence of the times that we're living in, this summer um, and this spring, actually, when we began advertising for summer work, I've never had so many folks from the tall unit and from um, uh, the, uh, our group of teaching assistants yeah. apply for summer work. They are very, very eager and anxious. And in summers past, I have had trouble filling those positions. Where this summer, not only did we not have trouble filling them, but we were able to hire more so that we can have support for not just the youngest students, at, for example, in the elementary program, but we're going to have classroom associates all the way up to second grade. And every intermediate classroom will have a teaching assistant that is shared between pairs. So we've got a lot of extra academic support. So I mean, we strongly encourage parents to enroll their students. They're going to get a lot of attention and, and, and help this summer. So the real challenge, and I won't digress, is the kids have to show up. We've got spots, we've got teachers, we've got program. Yeah. Now those kids have to show up. We have enough teachers, and the classrooms are teacher and aid. In many cases, yes. now the goal is, if you're watching, your children need to show up. Is that five days a week? Four. It's four. We, we, we took Friday off. Right. Well, we're not it's, doing it Friday. It's a 20-day it's a program. Right. And it's, and it's a full day. Yeah. So we have, an inc and I'll uh, brief you on this later, but we have an incredible amount of um, enrichment programming well, that is coming into the second part of that day for students. Um, the first 17 resolutions. <laughs> you know those resolutions? All those groups, from Master Ketchens to Modi Cox to um, everyone you could think of on your resolutions tonight are serving the afternoon part of it to make that, I'm looking at you because we've talked about this, to make that afternoon part more meaningful for kids yes. and not just, quite frankly, free for all play. Right. So you're going to have master, I'm just, he just, that stuck in my mind. Master Ketchens, Modi Cox, the food with Bobby Anderson. They're all on your agenda. Right, Playworks. Playworks. Dance yeah. classes. Dan yeah. Basketball clinics. Uh, you honestly, it's free for, for all of our families too. You couldn't buy a better program. No. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, Ray. Okay, I think we need to go to the next slide. Oh, yeah. Oh, that is the next slide. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, it looked a lot like the one before it. It did. This one is, uh, uh, this is uh, something that's continuing forward. Um, we've talked a lot this year about the post-secondary success team at Niagara Falls High School. So all of the personnel and costs related to it will be moving forward over the next two years. And also, um, there are credit recovery program for um, students at Niagara Falls High School. Uh, and this is really the credit recovery that will run throughout the year, not just the summer programming, but all of the costs related to what we typically, uh, or the support that we typically will give students as they're um, working through getting their graduation credits to graduate on time in the, in the best cohort will be um, reflected here. I'll give something Ms. Jones said two weeks ago. 528, I thought that was the number you had. That's the high, and, and she had 450 today at rehearsal. That's a high number because we're keeping more kids, you remember, through this program. That's the high, F 528 and 450 participating, plus another 34 to graduating is the highest number we've had in a long time because they're staying. And as I will quote her, these are not all four-year graduates. Some are five and some are six. But that's what you're using the money for. Okay. And finally, we mentioned earlier uh, attending to students' social and emotional learning needs. So uh, there are costs related here to our social workers to work with our students and families. That is still um, a spending priority for us. And then also professional development for our staffs, uh, um, for all of our staff, including our uh, support staff, our teachers, and our administrators, so that we continue to build positive school climate. Uh, there are a couple of uh, examples of um, organizations that we partner with to provide that training, and we'll continue to grow that out over the next two years. Uh, they're in there as well. Yep. That's one of the 17 first ones. So they're in there. Okay. This is a great slide that uh, either Julie or Becky created, but I, I love it. Did you do this, Julie? I did. No wonder I love it so much. So this slide actually shows um, all of the federal pandemic funds that we've been awarded. Uh, there's five categories. Um, so we first started out with our CARES money. That was about four and a half million. Um, so we really fully expensed that last school year. Uh, we then received the Carissa grants. That was that totaled about 13.4 million. Um, we spent about 8.6 in this fiscal year, and we're going to spend the remainder of that in um, next fiscal year. We then received our ARP money, which is the 30 million 138 thousand. Um, and you can see there our plan, we're spending about six million this year, and then um, 22, 23, about 9.3, and then 14.7. And then there is that subcategory where we have to spend the 20% on the learning loss set aside. Um, so you can see we're gonna spend in total about 12.6 million or 42%. So we'll be well over the 20%. So the, so the minimum was 20, we're spending 42% on learning loss Correct. alone. Um, we also were awarded um, an ARP Homeless Children and Youth um, grant. That's $99,000. Um, we plan to spend that next year. And finally, we received some IDEA ARP money, um, which is for special education students. So in total, um, for those five awards, it was almost $48.6 million over four years that we've received. This is a good chart. So when you hear American Rescue Funds, you can see how much we got in each, received in each category, how we're spending it year by year, and I'm sure this is gonna be a highly auditable area, but we can prove what we did with every dollar when that occurs. It's my favorite slide, Julie. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> now back to Becky. Oh, wow. okay. My slide's probably not as exciting. Well, it's boring. But that's okay. Um, what you see in front of you right now is a snapshot of what the State Education Department's portal looks like. This is what we are um, obligated to report by July 1st. This, they have specified nine categories, 
and I know it might be a little hard to read on the screen, it's easier on your printed uh, copy, but to safely return students to in-person instruction, and that category looks like we're spending small amounts, but within that is basically just um, specialized cleaning supplies, things like that, that we had to do our masks that we purchased, uh, all the special cleaning we're doing. The maximizing in-person instruction, if you can notice, we're not designating any ARP funds to that line. We are maximizing instruction, in-person instruction, but we feel that the way we're doing it, it also falls into other categories that we feel more more appropriately define what we're doing. Uh, operating schools and meeting the needs of students, uh, we're spending quite a few dollars in that category, as you can, you'll see totals on subsequent slides, but each year, this year we spent 1.8 million, next year it'll be 1.3, and then just over 600,000 in the final year. Purchasing educational technology, while that is a huge part of our plan, we are not funding it with ARP money. We are using other funding sources, including general fund, and, but we are going to give you some detail as to what we're doing in the realm of technology. But as you can see, we have other options to do that with, so we're not obligating ARP money towards that. The biggest area is addressing the impacts of COVID pandemic on students and the impacts of learning loss. We spent just over two and a half million this year. Next year it will be over three million and pretty much the same amount in the, four, in the third year. And implementing evidence-based strategy for social, emotional, mental health and academic needs. We are spending about a half a million on it this year just under 700,000 next year and projected over 700,000 in the final year. Evidence-based summer programming and enrichment. This year we spent uh, just shy of 900,000. We're going to be spending about 1.4 million in each subsequent year in that category. Supporting early childhood education, we are not allocating any ARP monies for that. We have other funding sources that completely support early childhood education, including our UPK program, Head Start. There's various other things going on in the district which we did not need to allocate ARP towards. Our other category, as you can see, we spent a small amount in there under 50,000. Next year, we're um, assuming we're gonna spend about 2.3 million, but just shy of 9 million in the final year. What that category includes are capital improvements to air quality at buildings within the district that have not had those upgrades in recent capital projects. So, go ahead. Uh, really for the team, first of all, thank you for this. This is fantastic uh, for the three of you. Um, so this spending plan, for every dollar spent in each category, mm -hmm. do we know if this is going to create future cost mm -hmm. for us for things that we might not have done that we're, that we're utilizing, all good things that we're utilizing this money for that that we're going to have to prepare for in the future that are going to be new expenditures? Yes. Yes. So let me give you the clearest way I understand it. See the, the green? Six million this year, 12, 14. The, it, the key is what Julie said. The, the reoccurring costs are the instructional costs. So what was it? It was the 42% versus the 58%. It's the 42% will be, if you want to continue Rick, everything that Rick's laid out, we're going to have to figure out how to do. So, but of that 12%, if you go back a couple slides, what we did is one, uh, one more, Rick, 
Uh, no, I'll keep going. That first one, I, I wanted to show him something because I think it might help. Yeah. Um, see, we're taking back, see the four million, four point eight million. It's to, we're taking that back into this year's general fund. Do you remember that when we talked about starting to take back money? So in this year's budget of that 42%, we took back 4800000 Next year, we're going to have to take back a, a more than that. And not to get caught where I think you don't want us to get caught at the end of the ARP money and not being able to sustain, I'm calling them Rick's programs, but those programs. The other thing that you should know is we've factored in the, the promise that we're going to be fully funded in foundation aid. You know how the foundation aid, if they fully fund the foundation aid, we should be able to maintain that 42%. Yeah. If they don't fully fund the foundation aid, we may have to go to two places. One, to reduce those programs or ask you to use that reserve money. Does that answer your question? It does. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Peggy. Okay. Thank you. Good job. Um, Thank you. If we can, this slide. Now, this slide shows those larger numbers broken down yeah. into, you know, budgeted categories within our financial system. So the first category I'm showing is the other. The improving air quality is our big focus. Yeah. This is just how we report it. Yes. And supporting early childhood education, again, is zero. But this is what those funds look like in our, in our financial system. This, these are the budgets we are operating under and the people and programs that they are funding. So that detail is available on the next three slides. And obviously, anyone can call and ask anything about any of those particular lines that you might have more in might need more information on, we're happy to get that to you. Now this slide is technology. And we, we, how could you run a plan and not spend any money on technology? Well, this is what Ray has designed for the next couple of years in our technology plan. And all of these categories are, we want to show the public and show you that we're able to do replacement of fiber purchase new laptops for uh, high school and prep, purchase new laptops for teachers, upgrade security cameras. We've talked about the phones. We've talked about a visitor management system. The, we've talked about wireless access points, smart boards, laptop COVID replacement, access controls. All of these things are going on, but none of them are using ARP money. The point is, we are doing two pages of technology upgrades in the next two years. Some are done, some are not done. And the final slide is mostly in the 58%, um, as Mr. Petrosi would call them, a lot of one-shots, mm -hmm. capital, capital improvements that don't go into Mr. Bilson's question. We're putting bottle filler stations in the schools. We are putting a playground at Niagara Street, of which Earl actually got a final estimate of $245,000. We budgeted $300,000. Uh, we replaced the equipment at high school already. We have replaced the musical instruments already. This is where we need to do some work. Earl has got to work with upgrading the HVA system, C systems in the schools. Is there, so that Mr. Bilson and members of the that consists of the 58%, which once we put the bottle fillers in, that's not going to be a reoccurring expense. That's what we're doing with our ARP money. Okay. And that's the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. <laughs> and as the superintendent said, questions or, you know, comments can be addressed to the superintendent. This will be on the website. And we appreciate everyone's interest and attention. And the expiration date for these funds, everyone, is September 30th, 2024. Mm -hmm. And I only say that for one reason. On the last page, we have a lot of capital projects work to get done. That means the work is done, paid for, installed, and money's um, asked for. Mm -hmm. We can't go a day after that. So we got some work to do, but it's good work, but it's good work. 
Mr. Petrosi, members of the board, that is all we have on our ARP and on our agenda review. Appreciate that, Mark. Is there anyone from the audience wishing to address us on the ARP money? Okay. Thank you. Hearing none may have a motion to adjourn the public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Bilson. Mr. Kinsami? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Want to go right into the other meeting or you want five? I'm ready with you. Okay. We already did the Pledge of Allegiance. We already did the prayer. So let's, uh, Wendy, call the roll, please. Um, Mr. Bass? Is he on remote? Still? Mr. Bass, yeah. He's on remote, yeah. Uh, Mr. Bilson? Present. Mr. Kisami? Here. Um, Mr. Kisami is excused. Mrs. Dunn? Here. Mr. Cadella on remote yet? No. Excuse me. Mr. Pareto? Here. Mr. Villardo? Here. And Mr. Petrosi? Here. Okay, moving on to communications. We have Nesba here. Yeah. Linda Hoffman, I believe. She's here. Oh, Co there you hi, are. Linda. Come on up. Do you mind For a presentation. Do you mind if I uh, say a few You're words? Up. Go ahead. Linda, you must really like us. Um, I'm back again. <laughs> you come to our meetings a lot. I know. I, I mean, I don't even have to go on my GPS to find my way here anymore. <laughs> well, we're glad that you come here. I'm glad to be here also. I have to congratulate you because I think, well, I know that in Area 1, which is my area from New York State School Boards Association, um, you've gotten the most awards of any other board in the entire area. Good leadership. Yeah, I no, think I'm, so. kidding. I'm kidding. Good, I'm kidding. It was a joke. Good leadership and, board, and good boards. So, you know, no, that, well, that's true. You know, the leader's so so. Yes. Well, but we love so. having you. I love being here. It's, it's a great honor. So I'm here, I'm representing our president, Peggy Zugaby, and I'm representing our executive director, Bob Schneider. And um, this award is for your Food Pathways program. Yes. And um, I loved reading about it. I think that the, the people who chose the program to honor were, were really loved it also because they chose it. And our food service industry needs such help so that I'm just delighted that you've had this program and I hope that it becomes a permanent program and that you expand it to the adults, like you said in the, in the praise seat. So here is your newest banner. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna tell you two things, um, Ms. Hoffman, three things, Ms. Hoffman. Number one, you can come here as often as you like. <laughs> we are, we, we're honored. Number two, the board supports anything that's good for kids. I would ask that the high school team come forward. Ms. Jones, would you like to come forward with your team? This is the team that, put that, it together. that has great. put the, and one of our, oh, there she is, one of our pupils, we call it a post-secondary success program. One of our coaches is here. Julie, I don't know if you did food service or was that someone else? Come on up, come on up. This is our chief educational administrator our three high school administrators, Brian Rotella, um, Cheryl Villardo, Ed Ventry, and Julie Conti is the post-secondary coordinator who put the program together. And um, we need some, yeah, we need, yeah, we need some. So uh, let me just say something to your question, Ms. Hoffman. Not only are we continuing the program, but we're growing it. And while we recognize food service, um, I want you to know that we had a police graduation a couple weeks ago where we trained, where we're in, inducting 10 high school students as hopefully future police officers. Wow. And we've got, you know, if you stay for the next award, you'll hear something more about this post-secondary program. But it happened for two reasons. The high school administrative team and one of three post-secondary coordinators on the end, that's Julie, put the program together, came to the board, they supported it. You, if you, in the ARP funds, we supported it that way because it was 
helping kids reacclimate themselves and getting ahead. So it was a perfect synergy of a lot of people working together to make it happen. So I respectfully and most wholeheartedly appreciate you recognizing us. I, and I congratulate the board um, and, and uh, all of the staff. I'd love to hear a little bit more about the program if they're willing to speak about it. Sure. Um, you know, like seeing three pages on a computer really doesn't do it for me. Right. I really like to hear from the people who are involved in it. So if you would give them a few minutes, sure. I would really appreciate it. Yeah. And I'll stay for the next award because I love looking, having awards yeah, given we'd, to We'd like to hear the next two awards, actually. It won't take much. Julie can take 64 seconds to tell you all about it. <laughs> Did you want to do it, Jules? Do you, yeah, I know. Okay. Do you, you mind if I sit? No. Because, um, the, no, not at all, ma'am. The back is like not a happy. Not day. at all. I'm going to leave the card, the cardboard tube right here. Thank you. Okay. Thank Please you. sit, Thank and. You. Okay, so I will address the culinary components, which is what the award was for. And um, we've had multiple layers of this. We have F bites in the middle school, along with the high school where students who are interested in entrepreneurship as well as students who are in um, our programs that we need to find careers after high school for have participated in. We also have, with a wide range of um, academics and abilities, we also have Field and Fork, which was a new program this year where they were able to attend um, understandings and content about uh, food, preparation, uh, manufacturing, the industry, how it applies to um, hospitals and everything else, along with hands-on experiences um, and classroom experiences. We also have partnered with the Cantina Restaurant, and we had students who may not be our typically successful students in an academic world on a regular basis, but they were able to participate in this program, and it could lead to a career. And they were very interested in the culinary component, but also um, it allowed them to work as a team and learn some of those soft skills and things that maybe sitting in a classroom didn't expose them to, but it does expose them outside of the classroom. So there are many other programs, but those are three quick highlights, and I might be at 64 seconds. <laughs> and we did have a great team that we've worked with. Juliana Petronsky is a career coach, um, Maria Sinatra, and um, Mark Dahl. And we all have different components, but we work great as a team. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay, moving on, Mr. Lori. Yes.
We're going to move on to, uh, let's see, communications. Oral communications. Anyone want to address the board uh, on agenda items? Can we have one of our administrators? Would you escort uh, Linda out, if you would, please? You're good? Yeah. All right. The, the sign -in. Did you have the sign-in sheet, Russ? I do not have the sign-in sheet. Could okay. somebody grab it back there? Is it back there, I Mr. You got one up here? Would you, do you mind? Uh, Thank you, Cynthia. Well, we'll we make, Cynthia, you only have graduation. We'll make you work really hard, always. <laughs> Cynthia, before you leave, we're all set for graduation for the board? Okay, great. Any questions from the board for graduation? Graduation questions before Cynthia leaves. No, can, I make a, can I make a comment? Sure. I just wanted to personally, uh, I've spoken to a couple of administrators. I want to personally apologize. I will not be in attendance tomorrow. I have a contractual obligation to perform a concert tomorrow outside of the, the city. Um, but you guys have done an amazing job. I congratulate all of, all of the 2022 graduates. Uh, I'm really sad that I'm going to miss it. That's been two of my favorite things I've done since I've been on the board, both graduations. So uh, thank you to all four administrators and everybody that's helped. And I'm very sorry that I won't be there tomorrow, but I know you'll be in good hands with uh, yourself and the board. But I just wanted to personally tell you congratulations, and I'm sorry I can't be there. You're good. And I only had one job, was to make sure that it was a beautiful weather day. And I think I did all right. I'm going to do all right. At who? At who? <laughs> At who? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. Our, our tickets and everything were in our packet, right? Yeah. Okay, yes, thank sir. you. Okay, I have one speaker on school safety. Budget item? I would think so. We had the three, we had the three uh, resolutions on there about school safety. So was the, the, that's an agenda item. It fits on here, I, I think. Um, and it looks like Joe Catherine. I'm sorry, that you? Come on up. You're up. I've never met you in person, but it's nice to meet you. And if you would kindly correct my grammar. <laughs> no problem. Uh, this is my son, Jonathan Jew. Uh, he goes to 79th Street School. Uh, That's cool. He'll be in fourth grade next year. And I have a daughter that'll be in first grade next year. So. Um, Your address missed you? What's that? Your address. Oh. 1225 North Military Road in LaSalle. Thank you. Sure. Um, I'm here because of Uvalde, Texas is why I'm here. Um, I don't want it to happen here, and my fear is that it will. Um, like I said, my son is going in fourth grade, and my daughter is going into first grade at 79th Street School. Um, my son's been at Abbott for pre-K three and four, and my daughter was at pre-K three at Abbott, um, but then COVID happened. Um, the school lockdowns, my question is for the board, can teachers' doors be locked from the inside? Um, can we have keyless doors? Um, because that was, prob that was part of the problem in, in Uvalde. Um, where exactly do the students hide? I know I've asked Mark that before, um, and he's been transparent with it. Um, but my son um, is scared that a shooter will shoot the door down. And he told me that they hide under the desks, and then he told me that they hide in the corner. So I'm not really sure on what really goes on. Um, so where exactly do the students hide? I think we need to invest in bulletproof windows throughout the 79th Street School campus and pretty much every campus um, in Niagara Falls. Um, we need to have, like the top priority to me is we need to have school resource officers. We have them in Sam's Club. My husband works at Sam's Club and Walmart, but we don't have them in our schools. Um, and what mental health services will be available to children that need it? Um, and also a mass alert system for active shooter besides a PA system. Um, I know Mrs. Cody says on the loudspeaker, you know, it's a drill or 
whatever, but it's, we need a, ma yeah, this is a drill, but we need a mass alert system to notify all the teachers. Um, and after Uvalde happened, I was afraid to send the kids to school. I'd hug them and I didn't know if I'd see them at the end of the day. Um, I'd watch them go in that school and I didn't know if I would see them again. Um, and is there a control mechanism for badges for the schools, for the teachers? Um, and are police in Niagara Falls doing school active shooter training? And will there be trainings for the public for active shooter trainings? I read that they're doing that in Tonawanda. So I think Niagara Falls should be doing it here. Um, like I said, my son Jonathan is afraid a shooting will happen. He has demonstrated with me at home about the lockdowns at 79th Street School. He had me react, react them. Um, he told me the shooter could just shoot the door down. And finally, we must be proactive instead of reactive. Thank you, board. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mark, I'm going to let you address some of those items that are already in process or have been done. Sure. Would you like me to do it? I would think so. Yeah. Right now, we'll do it right, right away. And, and just for the edification of those watching, and Ms. Ju, again, we've talked a lot. It's the first time I've ever met you, though. It's nice to meet you. And your son's first name? Jonathan Ju. Hi, Jonathan. Um, we, we, I, with the permission of the board, uh, I'll, I'll address some of those right now. Uh, first of all, to, to Jonathan, uh, I understand how you feel. I'm, not, I'm a little bit older than you, but I understand this is a very scary time. And what you feel is very natural and very normal. And I think what you feel is what a lot of kids feel. And it's not right. When I was your age, and that was just about 20, 30 years ago, um, we didn't feel that way. We didn't feel that way. And you're living at a time, and your mom and dad can explain this to you, that's so different. But let me tell you, your fears are normal. They're very normal. And we'll work hard for you and all the other 7,000 kids to make you feel better. So let me try to address some of those issues. Uh, Ms. Jude, not all doors lock from the inside. In some schools they do, in some schools they don't. Um, I don't believe 79th is one that does, though, Earl, does it? Yeah, it does, okay. What I could tell you is some schools do, some schools don't. It's something that we gotta make sure is done across the, across the district. But to tell you they all do, it, it would be uh, to not be transparent. And I think one of the things that you and I have agreed upon is we let each other know how we feel all the time. Yes. That's, that's, and we have. Yes. And we've always come out smiling. The, the, the second thing is uh, we are working now with our architect and engineer, and there's great urgency. And in that plan, I know we breezed through it at the end, uh, we are planning to put secured vestibules in every one of the schools, meaning you get through the first door. If you just have something to drop off, you slide it through a window, so to speak, and you don't even need to come through. And then you have to be secured. And then you have to be buzzed in through a second door. That's number one. That is in, that is in process. I'm going to lament a, a complaint in a minute, not with anybody here, but that. That's in process. Number two, what's in process, and you didn't mention it, but I want you to know this, is that we are looking at a proc system for the teachers that uh, uh, works and it's connected to the, every camera in the building. And it's also alarmed so that if the door at the end of 79th Street has for some reason been propped open, which I believe happened in Uvalde, an alarm will ring. An alarm will ring after 20 seconds. We have to, we have to do that for 340 doors. That's, in, that's going to be in place as soon as possible. Number, number four or five or wherever we're at, the board has seen demonstrations about um, bulletproof glass. Uh, we will need to revisit that when the architects come here to show us these secured vestibules. Uh, we did, God, it was before I was superintendent. Uh, yeah. we, we looked at that, but we have not installed that yet in, in schools. Right but it will be looked at again, and it's not just in the exterior doors. Uh, if you've ever been in Niagara Falls High School, Jonathan's soon going to get there. 
uh, that library is filled with glass windows. Uh, so that, and I know the high school probably has to practice and worry about that all the time. So there are places beyond that. Right now, on our radio system, we just purchased, the board just purchased new radios. On our radio system, an administrator can, um, can go to a channel and notify the police. It's a police channel that they have, and know that we have an active shooter. I know today the governor passed Alyssa's law. We kind of had that by going to channel two, I'm making that up, and calling the police on the radio saying, we have an active shooter in the building. Uh, there are other mechanisms like buzzer devices that you can use, like guy uh, pulling a fire alarm. I guess that's what it would be akin to. That will be looked at. Um, your comment about um, a couple other ones. The proper cro protocol is not to go under your desk. It's to move to the furthest place in the corner away from the, the door entry or windows. Uh, we have practiced those. We will practice those, and we have a security director Will I ask? Will I will ask to at the beginning of next school year observe every one of those drills in every one of the schools? We'll also do those drills in summer school for the summer school program we have. Um, we will do because we haven't done it since 2014 an active shooter drill with the students in school. Now, the police and the SWAT division have, when students have not been in schools, done that in every building so they know where everything is. As a matter of fact, the only building they haven't done it in but was scheduled for last Monday was this building. We've done it in every building. Number, whatever we're on, we have increased, the board has increased the number of social workers, um, school psychologists, et cetera, in the schools. But I will tell you, this safety and security conversation is bigger than just social workers and security. It's everybody. It's the teachers, it's the custodians, it's everybody. Um, resource officers, we have uh, the board next meeting will, I hope, approve for the four armed resource officers. I was at Sam's Club. Probably not when you were this weekend, but I was there and I saw the two Niagara Falls police officers stationed outside. I happen to know them. So I see what they did and I then went to Walmart and saw one outside of there. So I get what you're saying. We have not taken the step to do that in our elementary schools. We have done officer of the day, but we haven't gone so far as to station an armed police officer in the eight elementary schools. Quite frankly, again, it'll be something that I'll have to speak to the board about because there, because uh, it's not just the cost, it's the um, men and women power. When we take eight more off the streets, uh, it's hard to find police officers, so we, they have to serve the whole community. It's, it's, it's not an excuse, though. So those are just a few of the things that we're doing. Uh, about a meeting ago, we, show, we start talking about all these things. Let me tell you where the hiccups are, gonna, are coming in. Policies and procedures at many levels take time to work through bureaucratic paperwork. Yeah. I'm going to tell the board in a few minutes about next month's meeting when we can't even get electrical or plumbing supplies because of supply chain issues. It's an issue. Sending things to the state education department to get approval on does not happen overnight. And I think that's ridiculous. And I'm pointing over here because these are the gentlemen that do it, Mr. Smeal, Ms. Holiday. They put us and the board through a tremendous amount of scrutiny to get something passed. One thing that I didn't mention is that we added 130 cameras at the high school and middle schools. Mr. Granary is going to also survey the elementary schools to add more cameras in the elementary schools. We, we, that's another thing that we're doing. To get those kind of things passed sometimes takes more effort than we need to, and I, I want to express my frustration. There are also procurement problems where we have to get three quotes, we got to put this up for bid, and in the meantime, it's slowing down safety because of bureaucratic garbage. 
And we're subject to that all the time. Well, you better get three coats. Well, sometimes these businesses are so backed up, well, it it's hard for us to get three quotes. It's hard to get one is right. So I want to tell you, this board will support us with dollars. They've never said no. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you something they did say, and it was Mr. Petrosi. Do you have enough weapons detection systems? Do you remember saying that, Russ? Did you order enough? I said, I think we did. And we can order more if we need them. But where I'm going to go with our legislators on Monday, and I have a meeting with Senator Orton and Assemblyman Morinello, we need help at the state level with these archaic purchasing, procurement rules, quotes, putting bids back out that is slowing this process down. It is unconscionable that we're doing this in this day and age. The, I, get, I can tell you that this board has had audits that are as clean as you can believe. And I will not do something that's, um, you have to trust my integrity, I will not violate because I like him and not him. But I, I, I'll tell you, my frustration is how slow it takes to move through the system. Having said that, I'll calm down. And um, I will tell you that from cameras to secured vestibules, to buzzard and wired doors, to uh, looking at additional resource officers, to uh, more mental health supports. Uh, we're all about doing that only because we want Jonathan and your daughter and the 6,988 other kids to feel safe and the 1,300 staff members. And what I can tell you, and I'm just looking at them, right? There's, there's a, a gentleman with five kids in our schools, five in three different schools, I think. But, so the urgency is there. My frustration is on that end. That's my problem. That's what the board hired me to do. And I'll push this as fast as I can. I really appreciate uh, the number of uh, email conversations we have. And now that I know a face to a name, it'll be even better. But I give you my pledge, Jonathan, that we'll do it. How did you do in school? Good? All right. That's all that matters. You'll be safe. We'll be okay. We'll all do it together for your child, for his five children, for all of our children that went through the school district. So thank you for your comments. Thank you for letting me go off, and I apologize for raising my voice. It's all true, though. Oh. And I thank you for those comments. They're very, uh, they're very true, and it's very, very difficult times right now, especially when things happen so close to home. So, but we we have this conversation almost every week. Yeah. We're we're moving a lot faster. Well, matter of fact, other districts from all over the, all over the Western New York and New York State have come to see our systems because we are that far advanced. And another thing that Mark does. Some of these things that we're doing, we could put through grants and have them done two years from now. We're spending the money now to get it done today because we're not going to wait two years. So we're doing, we're going as fast as we can and we intend to do a lot more. No, thank you. Thanks for trusting us. Saying that, anybody else? No, thank you. Okay, uh, Wendy. I'm going to go fast. If I get too fast, let me know. Okay? All right, we'll take 401, 402 together. Uh, we have minutes of the May meeting and approval of budget transfer number 11. Move it. Thanks, Tony. Mr. Consum, Jimmy, questions? Call the roll, please. Yes. Mr. Bilson? Yes. Mr. Consemi? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Pareto? Yes. And Mr. Petrosi? Yes. How many was that? Do I have seven. No, there was seven yeas, no nays. No nays. Okay. Four roll call vote on 4.03 following bids. I'm sorry? Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't do too well in math. <laughs> 4.03, approval of the following bids, transportation services for students with special needs. 
and there's only one bid, 403. Second move by Tony, second by Rob. Any questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Bass? Mr. Bass? I pass him and we'll see if he comes back uh, in. Mr. Bilson? Yes. Mr. Kinsemi? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Uh, Mr. Pareto? Yes. Mr. Bellardo? Yes. Mr. Petrosi? Yes. So we have six yeas, no nays, and one we didn't hear from. Earl, are you there? Yes. Okay. Can you hear me? You said, you got a yes. Yes for Mr. Bass. Yes. Okay, 404, 405. Are the treasurer's report and the budget status reports, they've been received and filed. Personnel report certificated, 4.06. Motion, please. Mr. Consemi, Mr. Pareto on the second. Any questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Bass? Yes. Mr. Bilson? Yes. Mr. Consemi? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Pareto? Yes. Mr. Bellardo? Yes. And Mr. Petrosi? Yes. You have seven yeas, no nays. Can I make a comment, Mr. Petrosi? Of course you may. I, uh, on that a report that was just passed, I wanted to um, recognize and congratulate Ms. Bianco, uh, who is here. Uh, she is the, now is the new principal of High Park School, so congratulations. Uh, that's uh, a well-deserved, well-deserved honor. Uh, we know you'll continue the great tradition. And Jonathan, we're giving you the old Hyde Park principal. He's not old. Mr. Mr. Orfano is moving over to 79th Street. But uh, Diane, congratulations on a well-deserved promotion. Best of luck. Okay, moving on. Oh we my God. Oh my God. <laughs> I was just thinking about Jonathan. I'm sorry, Mrs. Bellardo. I, 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 I know why I did this, Russ, and I forgot because I got so caught up with Jonathan. He's so adorable. I, um, I also wanted to congratulate another appointment that we just made on that, you made on that personnel report, and that's uh, Ms. Cheryl Bellardo. Cheryl, would you uh, wave? Cheryl is... I apologize. I was looking. At, I, no, I didn't. I was thinking about. I was thinking about jo here, Sh Cheryl. I was thinking about Diane, Jerry, and Jonathan. If you want to know the truth, and, Cheryl. And Cheryl. Wow. <laughs> I had to kick him under the table. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I was thinking about. But l let me tell you, um, we are. Gosh, I feel. I said this to her on the first day that I met her. Um, I feel like we got a first round draft pick of the draft in the 17th round because we stole a first round draft pick from another district. And in the four years she's been here, uh, she's proven herself to be a number one draft pick. I remember that day when we hired her, I said, I think we just got a first round draft pick. And uh, she's turned out to be nothing but a first round draft pick. So you have a huge job ahead of you. You have a good team with you, and you were left with a lot of good things. But I know you're going to, you're going to also uh, take that school to another level. And I, I'm, I know I speak for the board. We have our complete trust in you. And uh, I just wanted to say congratulations. You earned a principal promotion as well. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I it. Congratulations. Good luck, Cheryl. A starting quarterback. We got her in the we got her in the seventeenth round for her first round money. <laughs> or other way around. Good luck to both of you. The best. Uh, we we're going to move into the classified report. Uh, we have an addendum that I'd like to bring in first. So voting on the addendum. I need a motion, please. Move it. Mr. Pareto, second. Mr. Kazemi. Okay. This is to bring in the addendum. Any questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Bass? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Bilson? Yes. Mr. Consemi? Yes. Yeah. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Yeah. 
Mr. Pareto? Yes. Mr. Bellardo? How many people about this program? And Mr. Petrozzi? Yes. I think that's we heard seven yeas, no nays. Okay. Now we're going to take 4.07, the personnel report, including the addendum. Motion, please. Mr. Consami, second by Mr. Bellardo. Questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Bass? Yes. Mr. Bilson? Yes. Mr. Consami? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Pareto? Yes. Mr. Bellardo? Yes. And Mr. Petrosi? Yes. Thank you very much. Seven yeas, no nays. Moving on to 408 and 409, they are the Committees on Special Ed and Preschool Special Ed. Motion, thank you, Mr. Consemi. Mr. Villardo, one second. Questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Bass? Yes. Mr. Bilson? Yes. Mr. Consemi? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Pareto? Yes. Mr. Villardo? Yes. And Mr. Petrosi? Yes. Thank you very much. Seven yeas, no nays. I'm going to take these short-term contracts. I'm going to take them all at once. Um, we have one with Niagara, Niagara University, East Summer Sports, Niagara University again, Reach Writing 100, and Kent Kwanowski, TRC courses, CAD Missions Incorporated, Teacher Training Services, Playworks Trading for Staff. Motion by Mr. Pareto. Mr. Villardo in a second. Questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Bass? Yes. Mr. Bilson? Yes. Mr. Consemi? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Pareto? Yes. Mr. Villardo? Yes. Mr. Petrosi? Yes. And 4.11, we have Head Start and an early Head Start. Mr. Villardo on the motion. Second, Mr. B Mr. Bilson, questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Bass? Yes. Mr. Bilson? Yes. Mr. Consemi? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Pareto? Yes. Mr. Villardo? Yes. And Mr. Petrosi? Yes. So we have eight, seven yeas, no nays. Um, just for the audience and for people at home, We've been working on these items for the past two weeks. I don't want anyone to think we're just seeing these for the first time. We are moving briskly through them, but we, they've had several hours of discussion. Uh, moving on to new business, we have several contracts here. I'm going to abbreviate. This is for our summer programming, so I'm going to just touch, you know, very briefly on them. 6.01, Avena Health Services. 6.02, Marshall McWilson. 6.03, uh, Master Cutchins Martial Arts. 604, Booker College Planning. 605, Melinda A. Syme, Psychologist. 6.06, .06, Because I Tried Enterprises. 6.07, Niagara Falls Boys and Girls Club. 6.08, Explorer, Explorer and More. 09, New Hope, New Hope Baptist Church. 610, Bullet Drome. 611, Hogel which is uh, formerly F Bites, uh, 612 Niagara Sports Tournaments, 13 Niagara Falls Memorial, 14 Project Lee, 615 Game and Entertainment, and 616 Niagara County Community College, and summing up with Research Foundation of State University of New York. Mr. Petrosi, can I ask one quick question? No. Thank you. Yeah, of course you can. And I am so sorry, because okay. I, I missed this in, in the last meeting. But to Russ's point, we, we go through all of this stuff. Can, Mark, can you just elaborate a little more for me on 6.05, exactly what that particular sure, can um, you program down, will Ray? be? Sure. Ray, Ray, will you scroll back up? The, uh, the um, uh, Professional Mental Health and Consultation Services for the Summer yeah. Program? Ray, if you'd scroll back down, please. And, and I think, um, yeah. is that for kids? I guess is it, that's for the students? That is for, that is for the students. Okay. That is paid for um, by one of our grants, and that is for, she will be available for the students in summer school. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank so you. she's a clinical psychologist, I believe. So Mr. Bilson and members of the board, 
She's a clinical psychologist, and she that we're paying her for summer hours to deal with the 1,500 kids that we have in the summer, um, to the point about having mental health services done. Do we, um, will there be children that potentially, let me make sure I phrase this right. It's, it, sounds like, it sounds like a great program. Just like, are there other children that maybe already know about it or families yes. that know about it? Okay, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. They, they yeah, know they, it's available to them? Yep. We have to, we want to offer so much similar to the regular school year. Yeah. I think we need a motion on that, right? That we didn't have a motion. I'll move it. You're moving it? Just for a second. Any other questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Bass? Yes. Mr. Bilson? Yes. Yes. Mr. Bellardo? Yes. Mr. Petrosi? Yes. Seven yeas, no nays. Uh, we are going to, when you have these grant monies, you need an evaluator. Right. And that's 6.18 and 6.19 through VIA evaluation and NG, M, N, 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 M, G evaluation. Motion, please. Thank you, Mr. Kinsemi. Second. Second, Mr. Bellardo. Any questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Bass? Yes. Mr. Bilson? Yes. Mr. Kinsemi? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Pareto? Yes. Mr. Villardo? Yes. Mr. Petrosi? Yes. Seven yeas, no nays. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to take 6.2 to 6.23. These are in regards to our safety plans. 6.2 is the district code of conduct that was amended. 621 is the building level school safety plans as amended. And the 6.22 is the district wide comprehensive safety <coughs> plan as amended. Ooh. Thank you, Mr. Pareto. Second, Mr. Bilson, any questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Bass? Yes. Mr. Bilson? Yes. Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Pareto? Yes. Mr. Villardo? Yes. Mr. Petrosi? Yes. Seven yeas, no nays. Thank you very much. Moving on to 6.23. This is the uh, property casualty, our umbrella, our inland marine, and our cyber crime insurance. And it's by NICER Travelers. Uh, NICER is the carrier embedded as Travelers. And also, I think uh, Arch is in there. We have a couple other companies. Thanks, Mr. Prado. Second. Mr. Villardo, any questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Bass? Yes. Mr. Bilson? Yes. Mr. Kinsemi? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Pareto? Yes. Mr. Villardo? Yes. Mr. Petrosi? Yes. Uh, seven yeas, no nays. Thank you. 6.24 to 6.28, these are contracts related to service agreements. Uh, 6.24 is U UNS uh, StarTech Group, 6.25 Meridian IT, I guess that's going to be for our telephone services. Right, right. To that's keep our new, right, Mark? Yes, it is. It's to keep our telephone service going until it's replaced, hopefully by Easter. But without this, without this service contract, we're limping along, quite frankly, with our telephone system. It needs a replacement. The money's in the budget. It's a matter of the company getting here to replace it. Mark, did yeah. they, excuse me, did Aranko go out of business? Ray? Ranko? Ranko, Ranko. Ranko. Uh, yes, Ranko um, uh, took, them out of, took themselves out of the bid process. They recommended Meridian IT to take over our maintenance agreement and had been partners with the transition. So it's worked out pretty well. Wow. wow. Yeah. They've been, they've been they were here from geez, 25 forever, years. Ronco. Yeah. But we, we have to do this to keep our phone system up. I wish we didn't have to. Anything else for you? Good? Okay. 6.26 uh, for student transportation, 6.27. Johnson Controls, and 6.28 Danforth. Thank you, Mr. Villardo. Second. 
Thank you, Mr. Pareto. Any questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Bass? Yes. Mr. Bilson? Yes. Mr. Kinsemi? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Pareto? Yes. Mr. Bellardo? Yes. Mr. Petrosi? Yes. Seven yeas, no nays. Thank you very much. We will take 6.29 to 6.33. These are agreements and payments and change orders. 6.3, the renovation and rehabilitation of community center, community education center roof. 6.31 is a payment to Ferguson. 6.32 is a payment to US and B. And 6.33 is a change order to US services for security camera work. Move. Moved by Mr. Prado. Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Bilson. Any questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Bass? Yes. Mr. Bilson? Yes. Mr. Kinsemi? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Pareto? Yes. Mr. Bellardo? Yes. Mr. Petrosi? Yes. Seven yeas, no yeas. Thank you very much. We will move into information and reports. And I'll start with the superintendent. Thank you. Uh, I am going to ask Ms. Glasser put this together to the board members. This is to select a date for the retreats. Mr. Bass and Mr. Bilson have. But if we could, if you could circle your preference on the retreat date, that's first. Secondly, uh, I just want to wish our seniors our 528 seniors, and I know it's just a few less. Were some of those students, uh, were we able to pick up any more in the two weeks? We did, okay, good. At the last report, Ms. Jones mentioned that 92% of our students were graduating tomorrow, and that there were others that were in the August hopper and in the January hopper. I wanna wish them good luck. I wanna say thank you to their families. It'll be a good day, it'll be a warm day, it will be an outside day, it will be a ceremony of one hour and 57 minutes. It'll be a ceremony of one hour and 57 minutes. A little pressure there. It will be a one hour and 57 minute ceremony on our field, and we look forward to that. I wanted to uh, thank the board for the 33 resolutions you supported, and all that personnel you supported, and the addendums to the contracts you supported. Thank you. I wanted to thank, and I know Mr. Weiss left, but I wanted to thank the Niagara Falls teachers for working hard with the administration to support a time change next year to help us with busing. Uh, we had many meetings over this, and, um, and, and through good work, good leadership, uh, we're going to announce the ability to get a few more minutes back on the academic day for our high school students with an earlier start. So I will be putting something out to the public. I'll ask the high school, Ms. Villardo, to put something out to the parents, but we will be changing the schedule for an earlier start. That's all done. That's all done because of the bus driver shortage. And uh, it's a one-year agreement but I appreciate NFT coming to the table and helping us move 20, I, I, I think maybe 20 more minutes back into the instructional day, give or take a few minutes here or there. But, and, and the way we structured it, the teachers are in before the kids, which is a really good thing too. So I wanted to thank NFT for that. I wanted to thank the city council. It's a great meeting last night. 13 of our kids were at the city council meeting. And I, so to the city council, thank you for honoring our robotic students. I want to uh, call your attention to these two documents. These are the grad books for Niagara Falls High School and the Niagara Gazette insert that will go to all the homes for our graduates. Okay, they're well done. I, um, I wanted to tell you that Maria made a few people, while they left her office, they were sad today. They weren't sad for anything Maria did, but they were completing their final retirement papers. And uh, Maria could probably tell you better, but there were a few tears shed. There were a lot of tears shed today by some of our retirees. Uh, today was the day for her to process them through their 
paperwork and their turn-ins of things, and I watched a little bit of it, and they were sad to be leaving this profession, I'm certainly happy for their health and future life, but to those retirees, uh, and we won't name them all here, we say thank you and congratulations. Members of the board, um, we have a meeting on Thursday, July 7th. The first meeting starts at 5 o'clock. The agenda, and Ray could pop this up right quick. I just want you to see this uh, real quick. You'll remember this agenda, because I think even Mr. Capizzi was here last year at the time. This agenda is when we, nah, I think it's the other one. It's the other one, right? There it is. This is the one where we uh, swear in the new board member. We elect a president, vice president. And you see all these appointments? Nothing has changed. Everything that you approved last year is the same. You have two weeks between now and the voting on them. Please call any one of us if you have a question. None of them have changed. So what we're currently doing, they're currently in. Ray, can you scroll up to number five? Becky, none of the designations have changed. None of the designations have changed. Authorizations, we have a new purchasing agent, but nothing else has changed there except the new purchasing agent. Becky, has anything changed in the purchasing policy of significance? So there are no changes here as we see them. However, you have two weeks. Ray, could you pull up the um, last? This is my last item. Now you remember this. This is the regular meeting that starts at 530. I want to show them something. Can you go down to, uh, uh, just, uh, we have three bids that evening, electrical plot supplies, plumbing supplies, athletic apparel, in-game uniforms. We are, and I express this to the president and vice president, we are getting very different responses on our bids. Uh, we're, we're getting reputable, good companies that are saying they can't hold their prices. They don't know if they can get supplies, et cetera, et cetera. Becky Earl, I don't know if you wanted to weigh in on this, but I want the board to know we're working on these. I don't have names for you yet, but we are getting some really interesting bid information. I bring that up just because it's a time like no other. And I'm sure the plumbing isn't in yet, but plumbing will probably be the same. It's um, not in yet, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Because again, just like the electrical supply bid, a lot of copper products, which is a very um, tenuous market right now. They're expensive. I don't have names associated with those bids, but I will email them to you. Uh, Maria, you will have personnel reports? She will get those to you. We have three short-term contracts. Happy, happy to go through those uh, with you at any time. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but could you just scroll up a little bit more, Ray? We're still missing two members of an audit committee. I believe it's a board member and a community member, but we'll approve what we have. The cal your calendar of meetings is in your packet, and Becky has worked with Ju Judy to make sure that we're in good shape with the meetings around the budget time. 
The rest of these, as I'm looking through, are very, oh, here's one that changed. Approval of the community use of school facilities. You know when the community uses our school? We have increased the rates so that you know. If you have a question as to how much, Becky can give you that. But because the, co the cost of contracts went up, we had to increase our rates for use of schools. So that changed. Uh, I'm, I don't mean to go too fast because we have two weeks to do these. Can you keep scrolling, Ray? Uh, the Memorial Hospital, that went up because, not because of Nick or his father, but the cost of services all go up. Uh, I, I don't, you know, a lot of these are special education things. Uh, keep going. I, the board is used to seeing these. And again, we'll spend time with you any time on any of them that you have con conversation on. These continue to be the same contracts. Uh, 607 and 608, I'm sorry, 647 and 648, I decided, well, we're gonna recommend those same guys. If you don't have, if you don't have a problem with it. Do you, uh, well, well, you can, they, actually, Actually, Mr. Villardo, uh, they actually worked today because I saw them all day. They were here from like 9 to 5. It was a full day they put in. Uh, keep going. There's our officer of the day. Uh, there's our police officers. I'm looking at Ms. Jew. I'm sorry, but that, that's where we approve all the officers. Uh, space, space. You know about classroom space. That's BOCI space for the summer. Uh, Omni. Capital Market, Ruffle, the, up to 659 are all new. We got a grant, $99,000 grant. Becky showed that to you for homeless. The 661 is, a, is asking you for set, a payment of $17,000 for the continued cost of the litigation in the Maesto case. It's $17,000. I don't know. I'm sorry, Roger. We did, Jim. You're right. You did. We were told that there wouldn't be more, and now there's a. You're right. There's appeal after appeal after appeal. This is a seventeen thousand dollar ask for more legal fees. These are not these two gentlemen at all. These are our attorneys with the Mayo case. But didn't, we, didn't they win that case? Or which, what, they, they won it, but they're still appealing it. It's an appellate court, some court. I don't. Yeah. Uh, well, they're trying to sort out the remedy, if I understand it. What, 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 where it is, is the, the lawyers are working on what is the remedy, how to, implement. how to implement the win. That's what they're working on. Well, how do we not support that? Well, you got to support it. Yeah. You got to support it. But Jimmy's right, though. He's right. There was a statement made where that was the end of legal fees. You're right. But we, I think we have to support it. But the money is for the remedy of the case. What's your amount, Mark? Seventeen thousand. Okay. The li the light's at the end of the tunnel here. I mean, uh, I hope hey, we can't uh, bail out of this thing now. I, 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 I hope. Yeah, it, I mean, we won. I'm in a wrong profession. Now, as Maury said, give us our money. Give me our money. That's what Maury said. And probably you know a couple of attorneys have to make car payments or something. You know. Yes, Tony. Give me our money. Anyways, uh, uh, but J J I remember, Jim, you're not wrong in what you heard, but I don't think we can afford not to. 662 uh, six, uh, is for a uh, service agreement for HVAC and fire. Pardon me, Mr. Uh, Laurie. Yes. 662 should be removed. We, revo we voted on it this evening. Okay. My apologies. I just noticed it. It's your first mistake of the evening. <laughs> well... <laughs> We'll take it off. 663, uh, can we leave that one on, Earl? Actually, both of those should be removed. Okay, Earl, it's your second mistake in the last five minutes. You just approved those two. 
We'll make sure they come off. 64, 65, and 66. I, I keep pointing to Ms. Ju, but these are these are the architects and engineers who are developing those things I said. So I'm just trying to, I'm not picking on you. I'm just trying to show you that we hired Clark Patterson Lee because we need an architect and engineer to design those systems. And that's what some of those resolutions are for. 667, we don't have a July meeting, so B Becky and Julie might have to make budget transfers. Keep going, Ray. Three policies. The concussion policy has a small update to it. The wellness policy has a small update to it. And Rick is working on the Title I audit and has to put in place a parent and family engagement policy for Title I to meet the audit. We'll have, we haven't finished, he hasn't finished that policy, but I'll get it to you. We, we have one now, but it needs to be updated. Okay, so during the audit of Title I, Rick presented and the auditor did, didn't think the policy was comprehensive enough? No, it, it just needs to be updated for language under ESSA. Right? Oh, okay. We're going to just add 703. We're going to ask you to table it though for 30 days. That's okay. Yes, because we have to have okay. I just show you these very quickly because many of them, 90% of them are repeats, but you have two weeks to question us and we'll answer them anytime. Thank you very much. Again, uh, Diane and Cheryl, I apologize, Cheryl. I, congratulations on your appointments. Thanks, Thank you, Mr. Mark. Yep. Quick question. Anyone from the audience wish to address us on non-agenda items? Okay, moving on from that, we'll go around the table. If anyone has anything, we'll start with you, Clara. Just want to um, say that I attended the Niagara Street uh, second grade moving up. I was very impressed with how well it was organized and how well the children were patient and behaved. Um, it was excellent. It was a very good program for those little kitties. Um, I want to congratulate Mrs. Villardo. I hope by the time my grandson get the ninth grade, you'll have uh, Niagara Falls High School in tip-top shape. Um, and to Mrs. or Miss Bianco, congratulations to you. Um, I want to say that in my prayer time, I'm asking God to keep our children, staff, and their families healthy and safe so that we will all return um, together strong. Um, I'm a little upset that today is the last day of school because now I have to babysit for six days. <laughs> uh, keep me in prayer with that with three little Lemon. munchkins. Lemon. Yes. Um, and um, congratulations to all of our uh, seniors who graduating, I have a couple of family members graduating. They are just so excited. And I will see you all tomorrow. And Capitol Cleaners is the best cleaner in Western New York. Oh, oh my God. Oh man, now I, they're gonna oh bill me for the commercial. <laughs> yeah, he's got a monopoly. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Oh, I'm kidding. Uh, Pearl. <laughs> I guess we can't hear us. Okay. Nick, you're up. Yeah, no, I just want to uh, give Maria a uh, heads up on a great uh, personnel report. We're in great shape for next year. And all the other staff, Julie and uh, what's your name? Becky. <laughs> Becky and Julie. Well, I got it. Anyway, everybody did a great job this year. And uh, I want to congratulate all our students for moving up and the teachers and administrators for doing a great job this year. It was tough coming back. <laughs> and I give them a lot of credit for doing it. We look for a healthy and happy summer coming up for our students to come back next year and teachers come back all rested. Congratulations to Ms. B Mrs. Bianco and Mrs. Valerdo and their promotions. Congratulations. Thanks, Nick. Rob? Great job to everyone that presented tonight. Appreciate it. The, uh... Uh, the reports were fantastic. Everybody, as always, does a great job. So uh, thank you for that. Um, congratulations, uh, Mrs. Villardo, Mrs. Bianco. 
um, well deserved and we're excited for you. Um, again, I'm really super sad that I'm not gonna be at the graduation. It's been probably two of the best moments since I've been on the board to do that. And, and uh, I'm glad you're all gonna be there tomorrow and I'm there in spirit. Um, congratulations to, to all of the, uh, the students that worked very hard. And congratulations to everybody in the district. Um, what a wild, wild year. It started off, you know, with the pandemic still slightly raging and, and we got through it and you should all be proud of yourselves. Uh, every single person involved in this district did a great job. Um, so congratulations to the graduates. And then two more things. Number one, I don't think you guys realize how lucky you are, and I have to say it because I was in a leadership meeting today, and usually when I have those, I call out Mark. We are very lucky to have Mark. He's a great leader. He keeps us all updated. He works very hard. So, Mark, thank, thank you. you. We're really, we're, we're, people don't realize how blessed we are to have thank you in the you. district. So, so well done. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and Jonathan, I want to tell you, I've got five kids in the district. Four of them are in elementary school. And um, everything's gonna be okay, but my, my kids, I, I get to hear a lot of really cool things being on the board and I feel so happy and, and I feel that they're so safe going to school every day. So you should enjoy your summer and you're gonna have a great summer and next year's gonna be great. And uh, you seem like a really good kid. Hope you had a good year. Everything's gonna be good, bud. And you got a great mom there that's looking out for you. So have a great night and thank you, everybody. Thanks, Rob, Jim. <clears throat> Mark, I'd like to um, thank you for your vision, working with all those unions. I think that's the first time anything's been done like this in the career of our state in the city of Niagara Falls and has something to be very, very proud of. Mrs. Bianco, it was a pleasure just to see you in the hallway today. Ma'am, not a pleasure. It was nice to see you stepping into the plate. Congratulations and wish you the best of luck. Mrs. Valero, I don't know if I envy you or I pray for you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I think Mr. Laurie has made a very, very good choice. And I think this board is here to support you in anything and everything you need. Mr. Bilson, thank you so much for all your donations that you've done for the schools with all your blow up uh, uh, pools and slides and not making any mention of it whatsoever. I think you should have that capital cleaners clean them once in a while before you do it. Uh, see you tomorrow. Russ will be under the black umbrella. Thank you. Thanks, you. Thanks, Rob, for all you did. Tony. Okay. Um, well, congratulations to those uh, two young ladies in the back that got a very nice promotion. Guys, you are awesome, and uh, you make us proud, and that's why you're moving up. But we uh, wish you luck, and uh, anything you need from this board, we'll try to get it for you and get it to you to make your, uh, you know, your, especially your transition uh, more smoother. Uh, again, uh, our staff, all the personnel, unbelievable, Maria. The financial, the, the funds, you guys do an awesome job. And to put this thing together without a hitch, have it scheduled, and have it accounted for, and have people in place, just unbelievable. I, I, I say it a lot, but I am proud to serve this district. And it's people, it's folks like you that make job for us board members a lot easier. And as well for you teachers and you administrators. You make this a lot easier for us. Other districts, you've seen some of it. You can watch it on those cable TV channels. We're going at it. Yeah. We hear horror stories. But I'm gonna tell you something. Again, I'm, I'm, I always look forward to graduation tomorrow, even though my kids are graduated from college already this year. But I still get that little uh, tingly feeling in my stomach 
like a, and I enjoy it because I think of those kids, I thought how excited I was, especially with our trades initiative and how we're going forward with that. I think we're going to be, we're going to be great in the years to come. Um, well, I'll see you all tomorrow and uh, take care. Okay, I'll end by saying thank you, everybody. Congratulations, Diane and Cheryl. Good luck. We're here to help you, support you. Good luck tomorrow. And you know, Mark, we have that one executive. We do. Here. I apologize. Members of the board, we need a one item executive and it's session. It should be about two minutes. It should be less than two minutes. Yeah, it's not going to be long, really. There are, this is with relationship to a contract, a negotiation that's protected under the Taylor Law. There is no action coming out of it. It's one contract issue, and it should take less than two minutes. Okay, and staff, if you want to go, you don't have to come. Oh, happy birthday. Happy Who birthday. Happy Tony and birthday, Claire. Happy birthday, Tony. We will be adjourning tonight's meeting in the memory of the following. If I could get the page back. Okay, one minute, folks. We're going to be agenda in the memory of the following people that are no longer with us. Dr. Elizabeth Felicetti DeCara, a former nurse and teacher. Linda Grano, retired classroom associate, associate and senior school monitor. George Kralik, father of Colleen Melson, father-in-law Dean Melson, grandmother of Chris Melson. Reva Bell Kramer, former teacher at 93rd. Iris. A. Gerasitano, retired elementary school teacher. George Mariano, father of George Mariano Jr. Brian O'Donnell, retired personnel manager and father of Brian O'Donnell and father-in-law of Mary Ellis O'Donnell. O'Donnell. Edith Palmore, mother-in-law of distinguished alumni, Bishop Sylvester Beeman. Uh, Christine Virtuoso, former pre-K cast Classroom associate, Joanne Wagner, mother-in-law, Michelle Wagner. We will be generating memory of those people who are no longer with us. Saying that, good night, everybody.